Hey, Fortnite fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports. And today, before we go ahead and jump into today's video, we've been notified by YouTube that only like 20% of you guys have the notification bell turned on for our channel, meaning only like 20% of you guys are notified the second we drop a new 49ers report here on the channel. So, if you've not clicked the notification bell, but you are a subscriber, all you gotta do, scroll down next to the red subscribe button. There's a little bell. Click that. That way you are notified whenever we go live, whenever we give you guys the latest news and rumors, and all the greatest stuff that happens here on the channel. That way you're updated on our 49ers. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the NFL Draft is less than two weeks away. As we all know, the 49ers have two picks in the first round. And the question's all, we all want to know, what are they going to do at number 13? Well, Pro Football Focus put out a recent article giving their best case scenario for every single NFL team with their first pick in the draft. And they went ahead and gave us our first uh, best case scenario for number 13 overall. And that, of course, is a wide receiver. And it's interesting that the best case scenario for San Francisco at 13, according to Pro Football Focus, is the wide receiver Henry Ruggs. Now, we know that Henry Ruggs is going to be there at number 13. That is not a question at all, but here's what Pro Football Focus had to say about saying that Ruggs is the best overall prospect for us at 13. Quote, most likely scenario is them getting Ruggs, who will be a perfect fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Ruggs' most targeted routes, excluding screens, over the last two seasons were the in route, the slant, and the crosser route. Of course, Jimmy Garoppolo led the NFL in target percentage to the for us at 13. Quote, most likely scenario is them that Ruggs is the best overall prospect for us at 13. Quote, most likely scenario is them getting Ruggs, who will be a perfect fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Ruggs' most targeted routes is them getting Ruggs, who will be a perfect fit in going to be there at number 13. That is not a question at all, but here's what Pro Football Focus had to say about saying that Ruggs is the best overall prospect for us at 13. Quote, most likely scenario is them getting Ruggs, who will be a perfect fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Ruggs' most targeted routes, excluding screens, over the last two seasons were the in route, the slant, and the crosser route. Of course, Jimmy Garoppolo led the NFL in target percentage to those routes. So that's exactly what Pro Football Focus has to say in terms of best case scenario for Henry Ruggs. And you kind of look at the stats here on those slant and crosser routes for Ruggs in 2019. It's actually very, very impressive. So 15 catches on 20 targets, 26.5 yards per catch. Think about that for a second. 26.5 yards per catch and then 15.2 yards after the catch. They apparently, according to the statistics, have met 11 explosive plays in 2019 on the slant or the crossing route, which as we just said, is one of Jimmy Garoppolo's favorite NFL passes and it's one of the favorite NFL passes of Kyle Shanahan. Now, Henry Ruggs overall and in 2019, very good stats. They're not going to jump off the page there, right? It's not going to be the 111 catches of Justin Jefferson or, you know, the CeeDee Lamb touchdown number. It's still a very, very good number overall and will obviously transition to the National Football League. And the question is going to be now, why is he the best case scenario, the best fit for our 49ers? Well, you look at the picks 10 through 14, and the answer is very, very clear in front of you. I've been saying for weeks now here on the channel that you have Cleveland at 10. You obviously have multiple teams at 11 and 12 in front of us, being the Jets and the Raiders who need wide receivers. So I think Pro Football Focus is looking at the needs of the Jets and the Raiders, just like they're looking at the San Francisco 49er needs, and they're saying, okay, Jets, Raiders, they need wide receivers. They will take CeeDee Lamb. They will take uh, Jerry Judy, and that will leave us with Henry Ruggs as the third best option. But maybe, just maybe, he might actually be the best overall option due to the scheme fit with our 49ers. What do you guys think? Quick ad break here on YouTube. Answer the pinned comment down below to go ahead and give me some fan insight on this take. Is Henry Ruggs the best case scenario at 13? Do you agree with Pro Football Focus? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. I don't know about best case scenario. I think CeeDee Lamb might be a little bit better, but I wouldn't be mind with typing Y right now. You guys should go ahead and do the same. All right, moving on. The next rumor here, before we jump into the Armstead stuff, we actually have a crazy good jersey sale right now happening at chatsports.com slash 49 jersey. So these uh, limited edition jersey, the black and red jersey, I should say, are 25% off right now. Yep, yeah, you see them on your screen. These are sweet. Sweet, sweet jerseys, and they're only $75 total, 25% off all authentic Nike stuff. You get Jimmy G, you get George Kittle, you get Nick Bosa, you can customize your own. 
We all know eventually you'll be able to sit in the stands and cheer on your 49ers. So go ahead and get your jersey now because, again, 25% off. Usually $100 bucks or $75 right now. Link is in the description, chatsports.com slash 49jersey. Okay, moving on to Eric Armstead. A very interesting interview uh, done by multiple media outlets with Armstead shows that he was almost as shocked as we were that they traded his friend and teammate to Forrest Buckner. So we know the Niners traded, of course, Buckner to the Colts. They now have two first-round draft picks. Number 13 overall is theirs. And as we're going to show you guys, Eric Armstead was shocked by the trade. Now, I still love the Buckner trade. We'll talk about that here in a second. But here's Eric Armstead on initially finding out that his buddy and teammate DeForest Buckner was traded. Quote, it was a shock. You know, I was really, con or I was confused and I didn't really expect that. Super excited and happy for him. Me and him are actually have been working out for a few weeks now, so we've been able to hang out and talk about it. God works in mysterious ways, and we both believe things happen for a reason. Before we continue on, I want you guys to answer this question because I just said I still love the Buckner trade, but after you know a couple of weeks here, do you guys still love the Buckner trade? Uh, if you still like it, type 1 for yes. If you don't like it, type 2 for no. Again, I mean, you get a first-round draft pick out of it. That's pretty darn good. I think it is still 100% worth it. But you see DeForest Buckner's stats in 2019. They were very, very good, but still... It's not exactly jump off of the page stats. He's a defensive tackle. They're not going to expect to have crazy good stats. We know how great he was, but as the reports had said a couple of weeks ago, he wanted too much money, and the 49ers knew from early, early on that they were not going to go ahead and give him that money, so they began to go ahead and trade him or shop him before the trade deadline and then went ahead and moved him. I get why Armstead is obviously not, you know, well, was a little bit shocked because the Niners aren't going to call Armstead and said, hey, what do you think about us trading your buddy to Forrest Buckner? But it's interesting to see the dynamic of how this works out. He seems shocked. He seems confused. But I think he's overall settled down with it and has been able to work out with DeForest Buckner as well over the past couple of weeks. You're probably asking, Thomas, does this mean we need to go ahead and get a new defensive tackle? Do we need to replace a defensive tackle? Well, multiple mock drafts and multiple reports today are saying the 49ers are in desperate need desperate need of a defensive tackle and so if you think we're in desperate need here are the guys you could go ahead and get Derek Brown out of Alabama is the number one D tackle prospect will he be there at number 13 overall probably not but crazier things have happened Javon Kinlaw is a very popular mock draft name to the 49ers obviously coming out of USC some say well, he might be the better defensive tackle over Derek Brown I don't see that but he might very well might, more than likely will be there at number 13. If it's not a wide receiver, look for Javon Kinlaw. They are meeting with the uh, with the, the D-tackle Justin Matabuki out of uh, Texas A&M. They've already done a virtual meeting with him, and they've also done a virtual meeting with, with Ross Blacklock, according to multiple reports as well. So they're looking at all four of these guys right now, whether it's a 31 or number 14, we'll have to go ahead and wait and see. What we need to wait and see on as well is, is if we can get 200 subscribers by, let's say, the end of this week. That way we can finally get to 20,000 subs here on the 49ers report. We're less than 2,000 subs away. And I've been asking for this for weeks. All I want this week is for 200 of you guys who are not subscribed to the channel to click the red subscribe button. That way we get to 20K to make my bosses happy. That would be fantastic. I would greatly appreciate it. And also, if you do subscribe, be sure to turn on your push notification with the little bell. That way you're notified whenever we go ahead and give you guys the latest news and rumors. All right, so as we all know, we're all stuck inside and we're kind of bored and we're sitting around the house and we're talking about how, you know, when are we going to be able to go out and do fun things? Well, Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio was talking to George Kittle about the exact same thing and Kittle's talking about how the NFL, as we know, is kind of gearing up to maybe not have fans in the stands at the start of the season. And that would, of course, mean teams would lose that home crowd advantage. You know, the cheering, meaning you go to a silent count. And it just, you know, overall helps out the experience. And I think it helps out exposing defenses very, very well whenever they get to play at home. But George Kittle apparently does not seem phased by this. I'll explain where he said this with Mike Pro, Pro Football Talks, Mike Florio. But first, you guys think the 2020 FL season will begin with or without fans? I think it's going to start without fans. But hopefully, I'm wrong. Type W down below in the chat if you guys think it should, if uh, it will start with fans. Type WO if you think we'll go ahead and start without fans. And if it does begin without fans, as many people are expecting, home teams could be in trouble when George Kittle comes to town. Take a look at George Kittle last year when he had big road games and big games on the road in hostile environments. There were three big road games I think the 49ers had last year. Week 6 at the Rams, Week 14 at the Saints, and Week 17 at the Seahawks. All of those games he played very, very well. Week 6 at the Rams, 8 catches 103 yards, no touchdowns. Week 14, Saints, six catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. And then week 17 at Seattle, the one we had to have, seven catches for 86 yards and zero touchdowns. Now, of course, Kittle was telling Mike Pro 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 Football Talks, Mike Florio, basically, that he is you know, expecting there to not be fans, but he's looking forward to the idea of going on the road and then not having to have fans cheering at him and, you know, yelling at him and saying mean things and making it hard to read snap counts. And so he's kind of 
right that if you're going on the road with no fans, it basically kills any sort of home field advantage that you could possibly have. So I went ahead and looked at the 49ers' notable road games in 2019, and there aren't that many really crazy hard ones. I mean, the four hardest ones that I found on the road, and again, we don't know what dates these will be. We just know who we're going to be playing. At Dallas, at New Orleans, at New England, at Seattle. Those are probably the four hardest road games that we are going to have. Now, maybe at the Cardinals could be a hard one as well. We got to see how good Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray are, are going to be. But at Dallas, at New Orleans, at New England, at Seattle are probably going to be your four trickiest road games. If you've got to go to Seattle or New Orleans and not have any crowd noise, I mean, that is a huge, huge advantage for our 49ers going on the road. And so on one side, obviously we want fans. That's, I mean, as clear as day, we want fans. But if we don't get fans to start the NFL season, Kittle, myself, I think you, should, you would, all, would all agree. Hey, at least it means that when we go on the road, we're not going to be at a complete disadvantage. Although, as we know, 49ers last year, a very good road football team. A very good football team overall in general. Gosh, I hope that we just get a normal NFL season with the normal fans in the stands. But obviously, a long way to go and a long way to go ahead and figure the whole mess that's going on right now in the world. Be safe and wash your hands as you guys are at home watching the 49ers report. All the time we have for today. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.